Well, I, I, I've been looking forward to this. I've been, uh, Casper is, uh, uh, and uh, the things that he has to do for this state and for the lives of, um, not only for the believers, but for unsaved people, for people that don't know him. Part of, part of the calling that is on he and Cheryl is that they, they demonstrate and they release the power of God in the, in a, the very unique way that they've given, given the message to them. And I, del- and I believe this, and I, it was something that the Lord just prophesied to me, that, uh, through me, is that I know that he is going to be a representative of Colorado in whatever fashion and whatever form that is. But whatever that, whatever that day is that he is going to be a representative of this state, and whatever else the Lord's going to do. But these, this whole family, Faith and Sarah, are so, such a significant role that they play in this whole work. Casper's going to share these this treasures from his heart to us today. And I look forward to it. So stretch your hands forward, if you would. Come on up here, Casper. Lord, we thank you for our brother. We thank you for our friend. We thank you, Lord. He's a uniter. And you have given him a message for this hour. It's changing, the prototype that's changing this world. So thank you, Lord, that you just anoint him afresh and anew. And Lord, as your fire came down, and Lord, it touched us all in a unique way, those even watching by live streaming. Lord, you are igniting a fire in him that never, ever will be quenched. You're igniting him to do what you, he's called to do, what you've gifted him to do, you've called him to do, and he is going to fulfill. And there's nothing going to stop what you want to do through him and through Cheryl and through Faith. We thank you now, Lord, for what you're about to do now and what you're about to share through him today. And we give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome, Casper, everyone. This is his launching Sunday. Yeah, this is the it. first place that he's going to be doing this. This is, it. this is one it. of many, many, many more. How many of you know that um, if you look warm at the end, it's going to spit you out? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> how you doing, church? Yeah. Give me a second as I get my setup going here, but. Um, Happy Valentine's Day weekend, yeah. or week, or something, something going yeah. on. So Cheryl and I do a podcast, a weekly Saturday podcast, and um, we talk about relationships and marriage and all that kind of good stuff. And it's always interesting on Valentine's Day, around that time of the, day, uh, the year, because if you're stressing out about Valentine's Day, you have pretty much messed up the rest of the, the year. All right. So you're trying to make amends for what you did and do throughout the entire year, and now you're trying to figure it out. So don't stress out. If you're believers, don't stress out at all. Yeah, that's right. Um, we have some, some gifts for the ladies. Uh, we don't have a lot. We have about maybe 30 or so. So guys, do not touch these uh, red bags. These are, for, <laughs> these are for the ladies, and they're out in the uh, hallway. But if you're having trouble with your, your marriage or relationships, we have... Marriage relationship coaches here at the church, Ed and Jamina, Jama, yeah. So Ed's not here, but Jama's here. How you doing? All right, all right. So I feel a little strange sharing this message with you today because this church has been loving and um, just embracing my family and I since we walked in the door the first time. And that was like six or seven months ago, right? Uh, so I really feel at home here. I really feel comfortable here. I also want to tell you, it takes um, some spirit-led pastors to allow for someone that they don't know all that well to be able to share a message with you from the pulpit. Amen. So I want to give uh, Pastor Didi and Dave a, a round of applause, right? And uh, give me another second here as I get some stuff pulled up on my electronic device. Yeah. 
We love these electronic devices, right? So we got Bibles everywhere now. We got them on our phone. We got them, you know, we got the Bible itself. And, right, we're, let me, we'll, let's focus on the electronic devices here, right? <laughs> so I'm not a pastor, really. So my wife is an ordained minister and prophet. She does all this stuff. I'm just an ordained knucklehead. <laughs> but what happens is, is that when you hang around <laughs> folks like my wife and they pray for you after a while, these things start to well up in your spirit. So... I've been reading and listening to the Bible for a long time. I've gone through it a couple times now. And I'm just going to share some things with you because, as most of you know, I ran for office and I lost twice, right? But during that time, what I found is that, well, well, even after the last time, I'm like, what just happened? Are you kidding me? How is that even possible, right? And uh, I'm reflecting on that, and I'm saying, oh, is, it, is this, can we start the slides? So I'm reflecting on that, and I'm saying, God, what, what the heck is going on? And I'm saying, how can we fix this? How do we save America? Because America is in trouble. How do we save her, right? And <laughs> I didn't get an audible, but what I got was this feeling like, how about you just love on people yeah. and let me save America? Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, like that's going to work. That's not going to work. But as I started reflecting on it, I started reflecting on it. I said, you know, I think, I, you know, God, I think you might be right. You might be right on that. So what do I need to do? Anything special? I'm, I turn it on. Is it on? It's on. Oh, there we go. Oops. Went too far now. At the thing. At the sound booth. You're right, you're right. You're right. Now I'm going back now. I'm trying to go back. But anyways, what, as this message started to, to resonate with me, I started to realize that love actually saves everything. I mean, it, it literally can, it can uh, really put people on the right track. Um, but it's up to us. You know, it's up to us as Christians to really start to share that love with with the people out there in the world. Uh, I had some, I was in a meeting a couple months ago and I was with some pastors and they said, oh my God, we got to do something about the LGBTQ community and stuff. And, and you know, I'm not a pastor, but I just said, uh, um, excuse me, how about if we just love on them? Yeah. Right? And let God handle the rest. Yeah. Our job is not to fix people. Yeah. Our job is to love people yeah. and let the spirit work in them. Right? Right? And you're clapping. You're clapping. But a lot of us, including me, I, I don't have this thing perfect down. A lot of us, we want to fix people. We want to go out there and make it right. We want to go to the Capitol and make it right. No, let's go to the Capitol and love on them. Pray. And not pray against them. Pray for them. Right? Pray for them. Because when we do that, things start to work. It starts to happen. And next thing you know, they are saying the right things, doing the right things, voting the right way, right? So that's what we need to do. And even my tablet decided to shut down. It was like, oh, yeah. There we go. Is it working now? Okay. Yeah, I got that. I'm not that bad. All right. <laughs> so... Yeah, so I got this message, Love Saves America, and I realized love saves a lot of things. Love saves the Constitution. Love saves our society. Love saves our children. Love saves our family. Love saves relationships. Love saves our community. Love saves uh, uh, political parties. Love saves our soul, which is what I'm going to talk about today. And love saves the world. Yeah. It's all about saving, and it wow. starts and ends with love. But where does that love come from? It comes from God, of course, but we, as the body, are supposed to deliver that love to the masses. Amen? All right. So we're going to talk about Love Saves America today. And, and what I really want to do is turn you guys and ladies into love bubbas. Oh, yeah. Love bubbas. We right? see <laughs> so, so Bubba and his friend were in Washington, D.C., and his friend's name is Shorty. 
And Bubba and Shorty were in Washington, D.C. one time, and, and Shorty was saying, Bubba, you can't know every important person in the world. And Bubba said, look, I know every important person in the world. And Shorty said, I don't believe it. He said, I bet you. He said, I bet you don't know Clint Eastwood. He said, sure, I know Clint Eastwood. He said, I don't believe it. They got on a plane, flew all the way to Carmel, California. And he went to Clint Eastwood's house. They went to the front door. They knocked on the door. And the butler came to the door, and he opened it up. He said, oh, they're around back cooking out. So they went around back. And he opened up the gate, and Clint Eastwood turned around. He said, oh, Bubba, how you doing? His friend said, you know Clint Eastwood. He said, I told you, Shorty, I know every important person in the world. He said, I still don't believe it. He said, I bet you, I, he said, I bet you don't know Donald Trump. He said, sure, I know Donald Trump. He said, I don't believe it. They skipped lunch, went all the way back to Washington, D.C. <laughs> they went to the, uh, you know, all the, the White House and all the top security and stuff like that. And Donald Trump was in the... Oval Office, making America great again. Yeah. And, <laughs> and Donald Trump turned around. He said, oh, Bubba, how you doing? His friend said, wow, you know Donald Trump. He said, look, I told you, I know every important person in the world. He said, I still don't believe it. He said, I bet you. He said, ha, ha. He said, I bet you don't know the Pope. He said, sure, I know the Pope. He said, I don't believe it. They got on a plane, flew all the way to Rome. And they went to the, the Vatican, you know, the 30-foot wall, but they went through the gate. And there was people everywhere. There was crowds of people everywhere. And the Pope was up on the platform. And Bubba said, Look, you know, he said, Shorty, now you see right here, I'm going to go on the platform with the Pope. Shorty said, all right. So Bubba worked his way through the crowd and he went up on the platform. And the Pope turned around. He said, oh, Bubba, how you doing? His friend fainted. Couldn't take it. He just passed out. So Bubba said, oh, my God. So he went back down. He went and, you know, he worked his way back to his friend. He shook him. He shook him. He said, man, you okay? You okay? He said, man, I was doing okay. And to the fellow next to me said, who's that up there with Bubba? <laughs> <laughs> so Bubba knows everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, I thought you'd get a kick out of that. So, <laughs> so, we are supposed to be the salt and light and love in the world. That's, that's a commandment, okay? You can't like, eh, I don't want to be the salt today, Casper. Sorry. It's a commandment. We are to be those things. What does that mean? What does it mean to be the salt of the earth? Anybody? Spice it up. What? Oh, purity. Okay, I like that. Anything else? Preservative. Preservative, right? That's what salt does. And, and, and how do we translate that into what we do in the world? Huh? It's lasting. Okay, yeah, absolutely. And if we're not doing that, guess what happens? If we lose our saltiness, we're worthless. Okay? We're worthless. So we need to be working on that. Amen? As a church? And we're also to be the light of the world. What does that mean? What does that mean? Anybody? Huh? Like Jesus. Pierce the darkness, right? We, we expose the darkness, right? Sunlight is the best disinfectant. Especially in politics. Especially in politics. So we need to shine light on it. So why... Tell me... And, you guys don't have to answer this because nobody knows. Why are the, the major pastors, uh, uh, male and female, that are on TV preaching, why are they not shining a light on the evil that's going on in this world? Why are, they need to stay in the shadows. Okay, whatever. You know, but but they, they are not shining the light. Now, they're preaching the word, but they're not shining the light. Not very salty. So I'm going to focus mainly for the rest of this presentation on love because we got salt and light and, the, and we could do a whole new presentation on just on those two. But I'm going to focus on love. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. I'm about ready to throw my tablet out the window because it's worthless. Okay. <laughs> all right. So let's focus on love. So love, uh, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. Uh-oh. Got some problems there. 
because we're not doing a really good job of loving our neighbor. Matter of fact, do any of you even know your neighbor? Right? Okay. Well, <laughs> you know, we don't even know our neighbor. And I'm guilty of this too. Like I said, I, I don't have this figured out completely because I'm just as guilty. We got people that live next door to us. My wife knows their name because she's, you know, she's a pastor. <laughs> I have no idea who these people are. She's oh yeah, Jim and Jay. I'm like, who? Who are they? They're a next door neighbor. Wow. Really? Okay. <laughs> Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It's not proud. It's not dishonor others. It's not a, a self-seeking. It's not easy to anger. And it doesn't record wrongs. How many of us, unfortunately, do those things every day? Every day, we got some work to do. I have some work to do. 